Hi folks, well, welcome to CompSci 330, the programming languages course. Um, I'm Dave Wessels. I'm sure I've met most of you at some point, either in 160 or 162 or 265. Um, so hopefully we have a, a good semester for those of you I haven't met before. Hi. Um, let's see, what did I want to get into? In this particular video, I want to go through essentially how the course is going to run um, get into a little bit on the content, of course go over things like the assessment, the labs, the lectures, the quizzes, that kind of thing, and just give you a rundown of the mechanics for the course, and we'll get into actual course content in later videos. So I'm just going to get rid of the talking head there, and that way I can talk to you without being distracted by it. Uh, let's see, so as far as the course material goes, the idea is we want to get into, rather than learning particular programming languages, we want to think about the theory and the implementation of programming languages in general and how language design choices and language implementation choices impact the programmer, impact the developer. So there's going to be a mix of very theoretical material and very applied material. Now, the two languages we're going to work with are Common Lisp and C or C++. Um, C or C++ just because I know that you've had exposure to it and it gives us a good mix of sort of imperative style programming and OO style programming and common list because it's a very different style of language. It's got a, a highly functional background to it and there are things that we can do in common list that you can rarely do in other programming languages. So it gives us a chance to take a look at how things are designed very differently in some languages. And we'll also talk about the implementation so we can get into the mechanics of how you make some of that stuff work behind the scenes. Now, for the things that we're gonna be going through, you need a good understanding of assembly language because we are going to dive into how we make these features work. How do you actually implement a class at the assembly language level, right? And we're used to working with programming languages with the different features of these languages, but how do you make them actually function? How does a compiler turn that class into something that works at the machine code level? So you do need a good understanding of things from an assembly language perspective, but I know a lot of you are taking 261 at the same time as 330 this semester. Most of the implementation aspects we won't get into until the second half of the course, by which time you should have a pretty solid basic understanding of the 261 content. So we should be in, uh, in okay shape if you are taking 261 as a co-requisite this term instead of having it uh, already um, under your belt. It does require good programming skills. This is this can be one of the more challenging programming courses, um, simply because we are dealing with very different language aspects uh, as we play with, with Lisp in particular, and as we get into the implementation of features in C++, you do need a, a good solid programming background. And you're going to need a good understanding of data structures and complexity. That's all gonna play into the analysis that we do, the uh, the techniques that we use to evaluate what these languages are doing. So it's all going to come into play. Uh, again, for the first half of the course, I'm going to focus on introducing functional programming in Lisp. And then in the second half, we'll get into the theory of language design and implementation techniques for language features. All right, in terms of contact information, um, again, I'm Dave. Uh, it's david.wessels at viu.ca. Um, I do have a phone extension, and as I just realized, I didn't actually. So I rarely remember to check my phone messages, and apparently I forget so often that I also forgot to include my phone information on my contact sheet here. Um, it's local2436 if you're on campus. Again, email is a far more reliable way to catch me or catch me on the Discord. That works as well. Um, office hours this term will be by Zoom. Uh, the official hours are Thursdays 1 to 2 and Fridays 12.30 to 1.30, but email me if, you, if those times don't work. I should be able to uh, fit in sort of lots of different time options on Mondays or Wednesdays for, uh, for a Zoom meeting. The Zoom details are in the 
first or second um, announcement on the VIU Learn page for the course. So in terms of the lectures, again, they're slated for Tuesdays and Thursdays bleh, from 10 to 11.30 in Building 200, Room 105. Um, I am going to talk about some tweaks for the schedule for these first three weeks of January, given our current uh, Omicron wave. So I'll talk about that in just a second. The labs are Tuesdays 1 to 2.30 and Thursdays, or 1.30 to 2.30, Thursdays 2.30 to 3.30, Building 315, Room 115, so our good lab. Um, you'll need to attend one lab per week. I'm going to ask you to attend your registered lab session for these first few weeks, just so we get a reasonable distribution of people between the, the two sessions. Um, after that, I'll let folks kind of move around between whichever lab slot is most convenient. So um, announcements and quizzes are going to go through VIU Learn. You've probably had a couple of announcements that you've received there already. Uh, quizzes will get you to do in lab through VIU Learn, but I'll talk about that in a second. So that's the, uh, the overall plan. For these first three weeks of January, I'm going to tweak things a little bit. I do want to continue primarily face-to-face, -face, but we're, uh, we've been asked to take steps to kind of reduce spread a little bit in January while we're uh, trying to get through our current Omicron wave. So labs will continue in person. Uh, we've got 16 people that are split between two labs, two lab sections, so we should be able to spread out pretty well in Lab 115. So the labs will continue in person. For the lectures for these first three weeks, I'm going to split it kind of 50-50. We'll do one of the two lectures each week in person, one of the two lectures virtually. So I'm going to have a set of lecture videos, as you're watching right now, so you've probably found these already. Uh, we'll have a set of lecture videos posted for each week. And what I'll get you to do is to use the Tuesday lecture time for these first three weeks to go through the videos for that week. So there'll be around 90 minutes of video per week. So I'll get you to use the Tuesday time to go through the, the videos for the week. And then on Thursday, we'll meet in person. I'll give kind of a short recap of, of those videos. We'll discuss them. I'll get you to work on examples. I'll take questions. Basically, it gives me a chance to make sure that everybody's got a good grasp on that week's material and uh, we can just kind of reinforce it in that session. So that's the plan for the first three weeks. Um, again, lab and lecture videos will be posted all semester for the sake of anybody who needs to self-isolate. So hopefully we can take care of things that way. Um, again, all the course content is available, well, most of the course content is available through this URL, so cscivu.ca, um, me, my courses, CSI 330. Um, and on that page, you'll find links to the labs, links to the lecture resources, which will have all of the videos and slides and all that kind of thing. Um, information about studying for the quizzes and how they'll be offered. Um, extra technical links, links to a ton of different examples of Lisp code. So all of that will be available through that URL. The two things that are going through VIU Learn are the announcements and the actual taking of the quizzes. So we'll get into that. Um, distributing labs, submitting labs is going to be done through our usual Git process. So we'll do a short recap of that in the first lab. Um, I'll if anybody is new to the labs, I'll have some extra information available for those. If you uh, if you haven't used Git before, if this is your first semester at VIU, then uh, or in CompSci at VIU, then we'll go through a couple of extra steps to get you set up and working. But again, for most of you, this is going to be fairly old hat. In terms of the assessment for the course, six labs, uh, seven percent each, so forty-two percent of your total mark. Um, there'll be a bonus lab available to replace uh, one low lab mark. So if you blow a lab somewhere along the line, we'll have a way to uh, to make that up. There'll be five in-lab quizzes, 5% each, so 25% of the total. Final exam is roughly a third of your mark, so 33%. And you can use the final exam to replace one lower quiz mark. So again, if you blow one quiz, you'll be able to uh, to use your final exam mark if you do better there. 
The labs will be roughly every two weeks. Quizzes will be roughly every two weeks. The, again, first lab starts this week, uh, January 11th. Uh, first quiz will be February 1st or 3rd, depending on which lab session you're in. Again, you're going to be writing the quizzes in the labs themselves. In terms of prerequisites, um, I'm not too worried about 162 if you've got all the other prerequisites. Uh, 261 this semester, I will allow you to take as a co-requisite. Um, again, the crucial material for 261 we don't need until about halfway through the course, so you'll be well into 261 by then. And I will try and keep in mind, again, we've got quite a few students who are doing this as a co-requisite this semester, so I'll try and tweak the... Uh, the discussions in lectures to uh, um, to address any places where you might not have gotten to the relevant parts in 261 yet. Uh, wait lists, not a problem this semester. We've got lots of space. No shows. Um, I'm supposed to deregister anybody who doesn't show up. So do make sure that in that first week, you either come to that first in-person lecture on the 13th and sign the sign-in sheet that I've got there so I know you're, in, you're part of the course, or email me. Um, by the 13th, again, david.wessels at viu.ca to let me know that you do plan on attending, and that way I won't deregister you. Again, other than those first three Tuesdays, everything will be in person. Um, if you're unable to attend a lecture, you can find the, um, the full list of videos for the term on at that URL. And again, they're broken down by week and topic. Again, if you're watching this video, you've found it already, so this is kind of redundant. Uh, content obviously won't exactly match what I do in person, just because in person we're going to have questions cropping up. and um, <laughs> I do tend to go off on tangents when people ask me questions, so that won't, uh, that won't be reflected in the videos, obviously, but they should be a reasonable approximation of the content. Quizzes. Again, I'm going to ha handle these through VIU Learn. You'll write the quiz in the lab, and they're roughly every two weeks starting early in February. You'll have 40 minutes for each quiz, and it's due by the end of the lab. You are permitted to use the lab software, so to use things like Lisp or C++ while you're in the lab to go through and answer it, but they are strictly an individual exercise, so you can't communicate with anybody but me during the quiz. Um, don't talk to others. So if you're in the Tuesday section, don't talk to people in the Thursday section about the quiz content. Um, I am generally going to require you to be in the lab to take the quiz, but students who are self-isolating, contact me in advance and I'll generally set things up so that you can take it from home. And the labs. Again, these will be in person, but I'll post video versions of the discussion for the sake of folks who are self-isolating. Um, we'll distribute and submit them through Git as usual. Um, I've got a couple of videos posted where you can review how to do that. Uh, labs start January 11th and they're due more or less every two weeks. Late penalties, 10% for the first day, 20% for up to two days, 40% for up to three days, and then it'll cut off after that. So no submissions after that 72 hour period. And I think that's about it for all the administrative aspects um, in the rest of the videos for this week. We'll start getting into some actual content for the course. Uh, hope it's a good term. Looking forward to seeing everybody.